Okay, so um, I'll stop. So this is uh, um, this semester's last class. And uh, like I said in last class, the last two classes, um, the idea I wanna you guys to learn are more philosophical than the technicality, than the technical detail uh, we went through. So the idea, even though in your future career, you may not use this at all, but the idea in um, optimization is, is quite useful in general for engineering or science applications. So what, uh, uh, So what we went through was one of the inexact method called, uh, uh, so originally in the steepest descent, so in the kth iteration, the search direction where um, we try to minimize our function, but we search a minimum possible value along a search direction, not all direction, just in one direction. And we find the minimum possible along that direction, okay, by solving this problem. Exactly. In the steepest descent, we have to find a step size such that this value achieves the minimum possible along that line. But last time, so last time we learned a condition it's called a Wolfy condition. It's a combination of two conditions on Miho and the curvature conditions. So the first one is a Miho. It says uh, um, the function should have some, you know, like uh, uh, decreasing in terms of uh, uh, values, like uh, it's called a reduction condition. So it is, uh, um, the function value at the next iteration yeah let me let me just uh, write the name of two conditions here and then we use a new panel to go through the two conditions the wolfy condition uh, number a is uh, uh, is a miho b is curvature A is the function itself should decrease after we march in that direction, which is this uh, negative gradient direction. So this direction is where this function decreases fastest at this point, but there is no guarantee that we move it's still the fastest descent direction, okay? Um, so this is the first condition is we require the function decreases in that direction. So this is, a, there is constant C1, alpha K and uh, uh, gradient. So because these two vectors are in the approximately, so sometimes PK, if PK is not negative gradient, but uh, it's roughly in the same direction with uh, negative gradient. So these two 
can be exactly opposite, like in this case, or approximately opposite, so that they are in the opposite direction. And this inner product is negative. Alpha k is a positive number. C1 is a number between zero and one. So this term is negative. It says the function value at the new iteration, it should at least decrease that much. Then the second one is curvature condition. It says at our um, new iterate, which is the next position, the function's gradient should not be too steep. If the function gradient is steep, it means we still have room to improve. So the idea is very simple. So near the local minimizer, the gradient should be small. So that's the idea. The gradient should be flat. So this one dot with PK should greater than or equal to constant C2. Um, let me see if the remote student can see the edge of the board. Okay, so it's okay. these two conditions. The main idea is, the main idea is we do not want to solve star. So the idea is we don't want to solve star, but instead we use an approximation and which is easier to compute. Two star. So instead of a solving star, this is the idea. Um, I want we can, this uh, I want we learn is instead of solving a problem exactly, we use a computationally cheaper method to approximate it and uh, while achieving um, good enough performance, like I said last time, we do not want to buy the most ex expensive computer. Instead, uh, we always aim for the balance between the price and the performance, okay? So, this is a Wolfy uh, condition and when to use it, when to use it, when to use Wolfy condition. So when to use Wolfy condition to find the step size, we need to introduce. Um, so it, it is used in, uh, and it is, so this inexact step size search is used in another inexact method It's called inexact Newton. So let's look at the Newton's method. What we learned, I mean, two weeks ago, um, or one week ago, was called exact Newton's method. So let's recall what's Newton's method. Newton's method is our search direction is uh, instead of uh, um, so uh, let me let me let me first write down our search direction. Our search direction instead of uh, instead of a negative gradient. Negative gradient is like our vanilla gradient descent, steepest descent. Um, the Newton how Newton find the search direction is we multiply an inverse to the negative, the Hessian's inverse to the negative gradient. Okay. And we proved, we proved that 
when our Hessian is con, I'm sorry, when our Hessian is positive, it means um, our function is convex, actually strictly convex because uh, we need to restrict our Hessian's minimum eigenvalue is greater than zero. So this is our new search direction. And uh, uh, Newton's method actually have a step size being one. Okay. So if we think about it. So the step size is one.
How about now? Thanks. I think I'm, uh, I'm on my last battery here. So if I'm running out of battery, because uh, I don't think the IT left any extra battery here, I couldn't find one. Uh, if I'm running out of, uh, um, so if I'm running out of battery again, so I, I will record a video back home uh, for you guys. So where where were we? Uh, where um, where did I? Where did the video lose my voice? Or lose my sound? Which panel it is for the remote student? Three to four in the panel three. Okay. In the panel three. All right. So let me let me just uh, uh, go through this uh, quickly for the remote student again, because uh, um, my uh, microphone ran out of battery. This is Newton's method. For each iteration of Newton's method, we need to solve a linear system. So this is a matrix multiply with our search direction equals our negative gradient. To solve this system, <clears throat> when n is large, so when n is large, it's very expensive. And so if the Hessian is an m by m matrix and uh, um, almost all of its entries are non-zero, then its cost is about order of uh, order n cube. So ResNet is some popular machine learning model. It has uh, 11 million parameter, which is about 10 to the seventh power, which means our n is 10 to the seventh. We take cube, we get 10 to the 21st. We assume the computer, um, one iteration or say one operation of the computer, it takes one nanosecond, which is about 10 to the sixth second. So it means to invert this Hessian matrix once, it needs 10 to the 15 seconds. So if you have a cell phone, you can enter this. You can ask Google, okay, Google, um, how, like uh, how many years are 10 to the 15 seconds, okay? And uh, um, so the idea is we don't solve that problem exactly. We only approximate. So that, that's the whole idea. And so we approximate, um, we construct an H of K, we approximate, sorry, this is Hessian. Okay, so luckily I, revisited so because of the microphone problem i revisited here it's actually it should be hessian here so we approximate um the hessian matrix the inverse in the original newton's method the search direction is obtained by computing that inverse exactly but now we only approximate it so this is our search direction and uh Next is we, uh, we find an alpha k satisfying Wolfy condition. And then we march in that direction. So it's like a combination of two inexact methods. We don't, so we don't the first inexactness is we don't compute the inverse of the matrix exactly. We'll only approximate the inverse of uh, uh, a matrix. The second one is we don't do a exact, so we don't do an exact line search. Instead, we just find a step size such that the Wolfy condition is satisfied and we march in that direction. And last step, so this is like a step one, step two, and step three is we update 
we update this uh, h sub k to h sub k plus one. And then we end this for loop. So. So this is a, this is inexact Newton method. It combines two inexact approximation. The first inexactness is is this H. H is not only an approximation to the uh, inverse of the Hessian matrix. Um, the second inexactness is we we don't find the line search the step size using an exact line search. Instead. We only find our step size satisfying the Wolfe condition. And uh, uh, so here, step one and step two are all in exact. So next question is how do we construct how do we construct a good um, approximation to uh, Hessian's inverse. Where is my chalk? So this is the next question. How do we construct um, H of K? And uh, um, so this is a, the next thing. What I'm gonna do is also a very important, I, I wouldn't say very important idea, but it's a very important uh, like uh, trial and error procedure in applied math is if n dimensional problem is too difficult, we try to solve our problem in one dimension. So So there are several, uh, there are several um, important, like I said, I wouldn't say important, but uh, almost de facto routine-ish type of methodology in applied math. The most famous one is divide and conquer. And, uh, uh, and here in our iterative method is we like, we improve one bit and iteration. And uh, um, this one is which, Get some inspiration from 1D problem if the ND problem is too difficult. And uh, um, so essentially, we want to in 1D, the Hessian is uh, just uh, the second derivative, okay? And we, we want to take the inverse of that. We can actually approximate. So here, I already give you guys like. Uh, my ACE card, it's we approximate the second derivative by a difference quotient. In Newton's method, in that formula, if we have, let's say, 100 iterations, in Newton, exact Newton's method, we only used the current iterations method, uh, the information in the current iteration. We haven't used, um, the information from previous iterations. Now, if you guys can recall uh, the canvases on canvas, our class, like uh, the image, the icon for our class, it is a little ball like traverse, traversing through the landscape of a surface. Think about this, if we put a, if there is a slope, we put a little like a ball on the slope, it, it, it like a, it basically rolls down um, from like higher to lower places, right? Think about this, the velocity 
the velocity is like hollow gradient. But it's a velocity at a specific point is only at that point. But the, the trajectory also tells us information of where we should go. So that's the idea is, uh, this is this is also the idea of a heavy ball method. So here I'm giving you guys, um, The method is we use previous iterations information. We approximate the second derivative by using previous iterations information. So, So how we, we have reached the kth iteration. So our trajectory actually gives us some idea of where we should go next. That's the idea of this. We approximate um, the kth iteration second derivative using previous iterations information given these two points are not too far away, okay? So, In n dimension, it's much, much more complicated. So now let's back to nd. In 1d, we simply, we invert this difference quotient. We get the, in, an approximated inverse of uh, the second derivative. In nd, it's, it's a different story because uh, we have to use, so, so Taylor theorem, the formula we learned in the first year, first semester of our college is actually, I would argue the single most important formula in applied math. So the Taylor, so we use Taylor expansion. Um, so here is uh, um, XK, um, subtract, um, gradient of uh, xk minus one. Let me check if it's uh, k plus one or k minus one. Okay, k minus one. So using Taylor theorem, So here I'll skip uh, uh, how do we plug in the formula. It is uh, the Hessian of uh, k minus one plus t times um, xk subtract xk minus one. So the Hessian um, multiply a vector, which is p and then uh, dt. Okay. This p vector is uh, P vector is just uh, here. The right hand side, the right hand side here, if we look at the right hand side here, um, if we think xk and xk minus one, they are two fixed points. This integral is with respect to t. The t is here inside this function. This p vector has nothing to do with t. So this is our function, which means we can rewrite this as the integral from zero to one. Um, the Hessians 
integral So it's like we pull out this p outside of this integral because this p has nothing to do with t. Inside, inside here, if the Hessian is smooth, let's recall some uh, mean value theorem we learned in the second semester of uh, the calculus. So this should be panel number seven. But the mean value theorem, mean value theorem says the following, the integral version, integral version. Uh, let me use, let me use G of T, okay, to uh, different from F. The integral of a continuous function um, from A to B, okay, divided by the length of the interval by the way this is nothing but the average value of uh, of this function on this interval right so we integrate this function on this interval then we divide the integral by the length of the interval actually If G is continuous, there exists a C in uh, A to B such that this is true. Okay. So this is a mean value theorem integral version. If G is continuous, so G is continuous. And our Hessian is continuous. And now let's rewrite that equation using mean value theorem. So the integral, the integral here is just the sum value of the Hessian. So, um, so it becomes is So it's like we replace this T to uh, C, and then we call that point uh, like YK, okay. So YK is YK is somewhere between XK and XK minus one. Okay. So we have this uh, uh, equation for um, for our for this Hessian. Okay, so it's not y k is between x k and x k minus one. It's not uh, exactly x k, but if x k minus one is near x k, this is a very good approximation to the Hessian at um, x k. And now we have reached the equation. So panel number eight, five. Okay. 
So we, now we can answer that uh, question, three question mark over there. How do we construct H of HK is, we exploit this equation. Okay, so we find HK such that, and by the way, by the way, uh, this K has to be greater than or equal to one. The, we just choose like H zero as identity matrix and we find HK such that HK multiply with this delta X K equals delta R of K. So um, minus one, minus one. So this one is defined by X K subtract X K minus one. And uh, um, this one is defined by the gradient, let's say the RK minus RK minus one. So R is like a residual, which is in turn the negative gradient. So here I'll just use gradient. It's a gradient of F at K iteration subtract the gradient of F at K minus one iteration. So this is a, this is a, um, And we rewrite it in this form. So that's how we update H of K. And now let's try to find a good way to compute this. If, if we think about this, um, if we think about this problem. So before I um, find HK such that this is good. If we think about this, HK is, HK plus one is a matrix. So, let me, let me tell you guys why this problem is somewhat tricky and difficult is because why this problem is somewhat tricky is because Think about the linear algebra problem, or say the linear the solver, iterative solver we uh, constructed earlier. We constructed earlier in this semester. The linear system we solve is given matrix A. We solve for X, all right? <laughs> now this problem becomes given so, so this is given A and B solve for X. Now it's given, let's say uh, another, let me use another uh, two vector given, uh, given P and B, we solve for a matrix. You guys see uh, why it's tricky? Originally, let's see uh, if the remote student has still can hear me. Um, see where the tricky is? Originally is we solving for, uh, for a vector, right? Right now is we have to solve for matrix. So the way to get this H 
the way the way to get this h is called a uh, um, is called a rank one approximation. The way to get that h is called a rank one approximation. So let me only uh, let me only uh, write down the rank, rank one approximation here, um, and it will be more detailed in my notes because I don't have time to go through all of it. The idea is very simple. We update h each iteration by a rank one matrix. Z is some vector. So Z is a column vector, then Z times Z transpose. So this is a column vector times along, this is a horizontal vector. This is N by one, this is one by N, and we'll get actually an N by N matrix. But keep this in mind, this N by N matrix is rank one. because the vector has only one dimension. So I'll stop here and uh, uh, we'll, uh, so I'll post the take home final, um, hopefully uh, this week, by the end of the, this week or uh, sometime next week. So the take home final, the format will be uh, all like a pr proof problem. And the proof actually is like the continuation of here. So. Um, the idea is we will uh, learn actually quasi-Newton method through proof. So there are, so we'll eventually prove the quasi-Newton method, the inexact Newton method convergence, but uh, it's very similar to homework five, problem number two. So I will break down steps. So each steps, we will prove some small things. So it's like uh, some reading assignment. So we read what is quasi-Newton, so we, we, we will, uh, starting from here. So we're starting from the rank one approximation and uh, um, then we'll move on. Okay, so Friday we don't have classes and uh, that's it for today. <laughs>